clients want to work with somebody who's busy. Why? Because that implies other people, that social impact. That they're good. That they're good enough that everybody would be standing in line. If you want something done, give it to a busy person. Exactly. Not only that, but if there's that social contract that we have that's unwritten that says, if that person's really busy, that must be value that people can, you know, that social, I call it the lemming theory. You know the lemmings, those little rodents that every now and then their population get too big and they, what they do is they actually go charging over the cliff. And they've got their butt up somebody else's, you know, or their nose up somebody else's butt and they just go right over the edge because they don't see what's coming. We all do that. We all want to be, the more, more unattainable somebody is to talk to, the more we want to talk to them. If somebody's absolutely ready all the time, there's no value. If you, if you phone somebody, think about it, doctor, love this example. You're phoning your doctor to ask advice, right? And you go, hello, and he goes, hi, is Dr. So-and-so there? And he goes, yeah, I'm speaking. What are you thinking? This really happened to me, honestly, where I was sent to a specialist. What do we think when we see specialist? Wait months, right, expert in the industry, okay? I was sent for uh, this expert consultation. I walked into this place, it was in a strip mall, so it really didn't match where doctors go, but I thought, okay, this came as a high referral. I'm gonna walk in, I walked into a room, probably slightly larger than this, filled with uh, chairs all around the outside, not a single soul in it. And I walked in, no announcement, nobody there, walking around, found a room or part off that side, and there was a desk in front of it. So I walked up to the desk, still not sure, I go, hello, right? Finally, some lady comes back out, and she goes, hi, can I help you? And she goes, uh, and I said, yeah. And she goes, you must be Mr. Groff. I'm going, yeah. Right? She goes, come with me. So we went back, we went back into a room, she sat me down there, and you know, when you're in the room, how long do you wait? An hour. Forever, <laughs> right? Um, I didn't even get sat in my chair comfortably, and the doctor was there with my file, okay? And we went through it, this whole thing, this is the procedure, you know, it's in your family, you should probably get this done at your age, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, well, it, what's the risk? Oh, it's not usually a risk. And there I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. My father had this procedure and he had something happen to him. And it's not as rare as it sounds. I've had a friend that actually had their, his wife die from this procedure. It's not as easy as it sounds. So it may be routine to you, but it's not making me feel good. And he goes, oh, well, you know, if something happens, you know, and this happens or that happens, we'll just cut you open and fix it all up and you'll be fine. And I'm like, I'm gonna lose your card. And I did, I never <laughs> called him back. Never called him back. Cause he was a little too lax a days, y'all. <laughs> You're laughing, but I was not laughing. I walked out of there in shock. I'm like, I didn't know they made people like this in the profession, right? And so you gotta know that we have a certain way that we're doing stuff. And if we're not getting the right message, you know, it's, gonna, it's really gonna mess things up. You have to have the process that answers those questions in advance. If you're always available and you're jumping for your client, they don't see the value in you. Your price will start to go down. You will have to match your price to the service that people perceive you. That's part of leadership. When I started my company here, what did I do? I told people that, you know what, I can get you in this week, but I gotta let you know that very shortly I'm gonna be booked two weeks out and you won't be able to get a hold of me. Now guess what, by telling everybody that, it only took a number of months before you, I actually got to the place where, you know, it's two weeks and then it's gonna go to four weeks because that's just the nature of the beast. Okay, now in the original part when I had nobody in my calendar, was I lying? No, I was projecting how I knew my business was gonna go. Why did I do that? Because I know that if you tell people how you work, they will believe it and off it will go. Right? That's part of my problem. I say, oh yeah, I'll be right over. Mm -hmm. See, that would be one of those things that, uh, you know, I would be saying, you know what, I'm a little bit busy right now, but I possibly will be in your area at four o'clock. If I book for 10 minutes at four o'clock, would that be all right with you? Yeah. Right? Yeah.